There's a fly in here and I can't see it. Oof, it's making me very upset. So if you hear a little buzzing in the background, I'm sorry. Okay, so we're finally at the place where I get to post the next part of Joanna's wedding dress, which is, as you can see behind me, the golden petticoat. Um, this project was largely inspired by um, Bella May's Cinderella petticoat. Obviously, it's a very scaled down version of Bella May's designs because that is a huge dress. <laughs> and I think that although it's beautiful, it's impractical to wear in real life uh, for the most part. So I used a lot of the concepts that Bella May talks about, such as fishing line hems um, in both the ruffles and the hem of the skirt. Um, as well as a circle skirt with just the ruffles on the end, which is just generally a more Victorian style of petticoat. Um, this was a pretty fun project, to be honest, because I felt like it wasn't too overwhelming. Um, with the bodice corset mock-up part of this project, I felt like that was uncharted territory for me because I really only worked on Regency dresses which don't have that much shaping to the bodice. So that was a little bit more stressful for me. I kind of get how skirts work. Obviously this is a pretty simple skirt. Um, so it was just kind of easy to chug along. Obviously I did hit a few hiccups. One example is that this fabric is extremely delicate. So every time um, if it was slightly off or you could tell the machine hit a thread directly on, it would, create little holes that I later had to iron out and it still isn't perfect but ultimately in the end nobody is going to be seeing this petticoat on the outside so <laughs> those tiny little anomalies won't really matter um but I don't think I should bore you much longer with this intro and I hope you enjoy watching me try to craft this um just honestly it's gorgeous like I love the color of it this gorgeous golden petticoat to as the base layer of Joanna's dress. Okay, so my pattern for this was pretty simple. It was just a half circle skirt that was about a calf length on Joanna, and then the ruffles would make up the extra length. Um, this is just a slow-mo video of the fabric just to show kind of how it moves and looks in real life since it is hard to see on video. Um, so I started out by just folding the fabric in half and then drawing out two quarter circles. So I drew one that was a quarter of the waist circumference and then I cut that. Then the next one I drew was the full length that I wanted and I cut that. Next I cut all the ruffles so I just folded the fabric over a bunch of times so it would be less cutting. And then I cut it straight across and unfolded the fabric. Next I cut the waistband, um, which is just a simple strip that was three inches long. So those were the pieces that I had at this point. Next I decided to test out different hemming processes on the waistband since I could easily cut another one. Um, I tried to use my rolled hem foot on this because I thought it would be easier. But it turned out that this fabric was so delicate that it ended up um, not really working out too well. It didn't look neat and it started to tear up the fabric. So I decided to just um, iron the rolled hem into place and pin it and then sew along the edge. So this is what my waistband looked like after I was done hemming um, both sides. Next I decided to iron my major skirt piece flat because there was a lot of wrinkles in it from being folded up and I just didn't want to have to deal with that. Um, next I ironed a little rolled hem into the waistline, the shorter end I guess of the skirt, and I pinned that all into place. I did the same thing by sewing right along the edge to secure the rolled hem. So then I had both sides of the waistband um, finished and the top of the skirt 
and then I just need to do the same process on the bottom of the skirt. Now this seemed like it took forever because having a circle is actually a lot more difficult than it looks and it takes a lot of fidgeting and kind of forcing the fabric to go where you want it to. Um, but after it was all ironed and pinned, it was pretty simple to just sew along the edge like I did with all of the other pieces. After I had done a rolled hem on the top and bottom, I hung it on my dress form to make sure it was the right length, and it was. And I was trying to show the beautiful reflective quality that this fabric has, but the camera doesn't do it justice. So I just decided to take a break from the actual skirt and go ahead and sew all of my many pieces of rectangles together with French seams. Um, so I basically ended up having one long, what seemed like miles <laughs> of just this long, long rectangle. If you've never done a French seam before, um, the basic process is just sewing a straight seam and then you fold it over the opposite way, iron it, and then sew it again so that all of the raw seams are enclosed um, and you don't have to worry about them. Next, it was time to um, sew the waistband on. So I kind of did an interesting process with the waistband. I sewed it on on one uh, side and then I ironed it flat. Then what I did was add a piece of cotton tape inside it and decided to sew along um, most of it so that the back would gather up. So I left the drawstring kind of loose inside um, the back part of it. And I just ended up sewing the cotton tape onto the seam allowance that was left over from sewing the waistband onto the actual skirt. So this is what it looked like um, at this point. The next step was to fold the waistband over um, all of the cotton tape and then baste it into place. I decided to baste it. Um, I usually hate basting but I decided to baste this since it was so, this fabric is so slippery and I didn't want to um, have a huge mistake on something as noticeable as the waistband. So this is what it looked like when it was done. I just sewed a straight seam along the bottom part of the waistband. And then in the back, it did turn out well as a drawstring. So the, flat, the front will stay nice and flat while the back can gather up um, to fit. This is Joanna trying the skirt on to make sure it was the right length. And I thought it fit really well. After that, it was time to move on to hemming the ruffles with a fishing line hem. So a fishing line hem is just a rolled hem with some, well the thickest fishing line I could find <laughs> kind of shoved in there when you hem it. So um, this creates a stiffness to the ruffles and really helps to hold out the skirt um, and give it a really nice body. And I learned this method from Bella May's videos, as I mentioned in the intro, and I will link um, her Cinderella petticoat video below. After I did that, I just zigzag stitched the top edge of this long, <laughs> long thing of ruffles, and then I used my machine um, set to the lowest thread tension to put a gathering stitch in the top of the ruffles. Um, there's two ways to do a gathering stitch by machine. You can either put it on the highest thread tension and the longest stitch or the lowest thread tension and the longest stitch. Um, the lower thread tension allows you to kind of pull the gathering thread and the highest thread tension kind of gathers it up for you. So I pulled the gathering thread and this took forever <laughs> to adjust. Um, what I did was mark out corresponding um, points on the skirt and the ruffles 
and then I pinned those corresponding points together and kind of just freehanded the rest down and spent forever <laughs> sewing these ruffles into place. Um, this took so much fidgeting and I messed up multiple times. It was a very frustrating process, um, much more so than I expected, and it was much harder than the rest of the assembly of the skirt. After that, all that was left to do was to sew up the back seam, so I just pinned that into place and then sewed it up. And my last little bit to do, I decided to overlap the ends of the ruffles and French seam that last little bit that was left open together so that would it would match the rest. So this is the finished product. Um, it has a very Victorian, late Victorian um, feel to it. The drawstring ended up being a great technique, um, so it's adjustable and it gathers up nicely in the back. Um, I do like dresses that have more of a, um, a more body in the back than the front because I feel like it gives a really nice shape. Um, I also really love the way that this fabric moves with all of the ruffles on the bottom. It's very light and flowy um, and it catches the light in a very interesting and unique way. So thank you for watching. Um, the next video to come will be the next layer of the petticoat and I will see you back here then. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more from me and for more regular updates you can follow me on Instagram at Adventures with Izzy.